In January 2006, Ricky McGee had been offered work in a government department in Port Hedland, Western Australia. He accepted the job and set off on the long drive, which he had made multiple times before. Driving a 2001 Mitsubishi Challenger, he took the Bunting Highway, which for much of his journey was a desert track across the outback of the Northern Territory. However, his plans took a horrifying turn as he encountered fellow travelers seemingly stranded with car trouble. Moved by compassion, Ricky decided to lend a hand, offering to drive one of them to the nearest town for assistance. Little did he anticipate the shocking reality. His goodwill led to a nightmarish scenario as he was drugged, mugged, and callously abandoned. So he says, Watch this video throughout especially the end and give me your thoughts. Do you believe this story? Do you believe only half the story? Later that day, Ricky awoke with four dingoes clawing at him. Lying in a shallow grave, he was covered with a piece of tarpaulin. So thankfully, the dingoes were unable to get to him. The travelers took his shoes and socks but left him wearing a t-shirt and shorts. He still had his car keys, $12.30 and a mobile phone with a dead battery. Ricky was fortunate to be alive, but what he did know was that he had 10 more weeks in a vast, dry wilderness that was the size of France, Italy, and Spain combined. Determined to find a way out, Ricky walked towards a distant hill, hoping to locate a road or his missing car. With no car or road in sight, he had no choice but to start walking. Covering such a vast desert barefoot was no small feat. Deprived of water for the initial two days, he resorted to drinking his own urine. He saw rain clouds in the distance and walked towards it. He missed the rain but came across pools of water in between the rocks. While he was walking, his feet were bruised and torn. He was in a lot of pain, so he ended up ripping his t-shirt in two and wrapped it around his feet. Ricky managed to trek approximately 90 kilometers, floating downstream for six kilometers in a seasonal creek he stumbled upon. Ultimately, he walked about 84 kilometers before reaching a road that led him to a cattle station in the Northern Territory. Now you would think he would be safe for those who don't know how big a cattle station is in this area. This cattle station was two and a half thousand kilometers square. So that sort of gives you an idea of the size of this station. And due to the wet season, usually you wouldn't see any signs of station hands unless you're very lucky. Over the course of his 71 days, Ricky ate nearly everything he could find. Lizards, frogs, leeches, snakes, grasshoppers, and caterpillars. Anything that slithered, crawled, scurried, or crept across the desert floor was fair game. In fact, he developed an affinity for certain kinds of frogs over others. Leeches, he said, are okay, but you must eat them quickly. Otherwise, they attach to the inside of your mouth. He even tried a cockroach, but by the time he put it in his mouth, it ran out. Ricky also ate plants. His rule for eating plants, if it tasted good, he ate it. He was lucky he didn't come across poisonous plants or was bitten by a poisonous spider or snake. But as much as he tried and as much as he ate, Ricky was slowly losing his battle with the desert. He was literally starving to death. Just a quick interruption, I would be extremely grateful more than you will ever know if you could spare a moment to pause this video to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. Continuing on. Throughout his ordeal, he tried sleeping, but at night it was very cold. He would try to sleep by digging holes under whatever trees he could find. He found two dams that had water in them where he made makeshift shelters, one for at least 10 days, the other for a few weeks. It was so unbearable. The bites of the mosquitoes drove him nuts. He felt that he was getting drained of all his blood as it was constant. The physical toll was staggering. Ricky's weight plummeted from 160 kilos to a skeletal 46 kilos. He lost more than half his body weight. He was eventually discovered by a group of station hands 50 kilometers from Birindudu Station. He was taken to the station and then was flown to Royal Darwin Hospital. He spent six days in hospital and had a full recovery. He ended up writing a book. Now, here come the question marks literally. Firstly, the police didn't believe his story of being drugged, mugged, and abandoned in the middle of the Australian outback. 
He changed his story so many times to his rescuers, police, media, and even in the writing of his book. Initially, he told his rescuers that his car had broken down, but later to the police, he claimed that he had been drugged by hitchhikers and left for dead. In a detailed account later, he explained that he had picked up a lone aboriginal hitchhiker. He believed that the hitchhiker had drugged his drink, an unusual occurrence as he typically opened his own drinks, but on this occasion allowed his passenger to do so. In another version, he mentioned encountering three men on the roadside who had run out of gas. He offered to give one of them a lift to a gas station. However, they attempted to overpower him, and he was stabbed with a drug needle. He recalled feeling increasingly dazed and confused before blacking out and recovering consciousness hours later. Another account, according to Ricky, his attackers didn't leave immediately. They overpowered and stunned him. When he regained consciousness, he found himself in their camp. Although they pointed a revolver at him, they never used it, and they provided him with water. After some time, the carjackers left, taking his socks and shoes, but leaving him with $12.30, his car keys, and the mobile phone that had a dead battery. The media and public started to speculate after finding out that he had previous minor drug convictions. Theories suggest that Ricky may have been using drugs at the time, got into trouble with drug dealers. His car broke down, he then wandered off on his own while under the influence of drugs. As for his car, it was never found. Why would they leave him with his car keys? This raises questions about whether he was indeed driving a car during this ordeal. Also, why would they leave him with money even though it was only $12 and a mobile phone, even though his battery was flat? And last of all, why would they leave him alive? Regardless of the initial circumstances, the fact still remains that he found himself in the middle of nowhere. He looked like a mere skeleton when found and there was no real evidence to say otherwise. The police decided to not look into his case any further. If you want to read his account from his book that goes into a lot of detail, it's called Left for Dead, How I Survived 71 Days Lost in a Desert Hell written by Ricky Mickey and Graham Clean. Please don't forget to subscribe and like. Until next time, bye for now.